There's one industry that we know doesn't go out of style no matter what the fads are, right? And that is death. There are people on this planet dying every single day. Just as people are being born, there's people that are dying. We know this to be true. Can you imagine how overrun the population would be if people didn't die and they were just being born? This is the balance that seemingly is constantly there. When that time comes for you, will you be ready? Welcome to episode 76 of the Audacious Faith Podcast. I'd like to start off and begin with a question that's been asked through the ages, and it's just as applicable today. We find it in Job chapter 14, 14, and the question is this, if a man dies, will he live again? Isn't that the question of the hour? It's something that I believe all of us have, have considered. I know that even when I was a small child going to a funeral, I wondered, hey, what would my life be like? How long would it be? Who would come at a funeral? All, all these thoughts go through our mind. How would we eventually die? Would it be in our sleep? Would it be quick and painless? Or would it be a slow and painful death? I know that through the years, I've seen many people that have faced death face to face, and I've had to do funerals, and I've had hospital visitations, and and just a whole bunch of this. And and I have observed that one thing. It's one of the reasons I really don't like to go to hospitals very much because people often are, are, are dying there. But what happens after a person dies? That's the question. If your day today was the last day that you had on earth, do you know where you'd be going? I do. Do you? This question was asked by Job because it matters so very much. You see, our whole life and how we live it the actions we take, the things that we value, a lot of this is all determined by the answer in our mind to this question. Because if when we die, this is it, and we don't live again, and, and there's no afterlife, and nothing that we do now has any effect on it whatsoever, then just as the Bible often says as well, people say, eat, drink, and be merry. Just live each day to the fullest, the best you can, because tomorrow we die, and that's it. However, if decisions that we make in this life and how we live have a bearing on eternity, that changes the game completely, doesn't it? One thing that I know is this. I have never gone and attended a funeral that I didn't do myself where I've ever heard the pastor or whoever's up there leading say anything other than, you know what, we now know that they're in a better place. May they rest in peace. We know that they're now in the hands of God and in the arms of God, and, and they're welcomed into heaven. But is that true? I'm here to tell you the honest truth today, and that is that many people that are dying every single day are not going to heaven. In fact, they're going to spend a Christless eternity in a place that the Bible calls hell. Now, I know that doesn't sound very encouraging, and it may even sound a little bit negative. But should I deceive you with just telling you what you want to hear? Or should I warn you, as Jesus did very often, by telling you the truth? So let's go back to the beginning and, and understand why it is that we even have this question to begin with. The Bible tells us that it is appointed unto a man once to die and then the judgment. We have an appointment that has been preordained at a certain time. You don't know when it is. I don't know when it is, but God knows when it is. And that appointment, once it comes, right after that is going to be the judgment. Now, what is the judgment? The judgment is a determination on whether or not the qualifications have been satisfied for you and I to go to heaven. Now, there's a couple of ways to do this, because uh, payment for sin, because the Bible tells us what? All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Payment for sin has to be satisfied. The Bible tells us also in Romans 6, 23, the wages of sin, it is death. But there's a gift, and that gift of God is eternal life, which comes through Jesus Christ the Lord. So how do you decide? How do you know? When it comes time to that judgment, what's going to be judged? We have a choice. We can either have the judgment based on our performance, 
or based on what Jesus has done in his performance. In other words, we can go to heaven or not go to heaven based on what you and I do or on what Jesus has done. Which one do you think might work better? Well, let's start from the beginning. And we have Adam and Eve, and, and they're in the garden, and they're faced with a choice. God has told them, all of the trees of the garden you may have. Just do not touch of this one tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And what do they do? What do you and I do? Why not that one? And they start looking at that one. It tells us in the word that Adam actually knew exactly what was going on. He wasn't deceived. But the woman actually came along and was deceived by the evil one. She saw that the tree was good for food. She saw that it was desirable to make one wise. And she saw that it looked like it would taste really good. And so what happened? She desired it. She gave into it. She ate of the fruit. She disobeyed God. Adam, having the choice between following his wife or staying true to God, he followed her, also took of the fruit. And, and what happened? This disobedience is when sin entered into the world. And suddenly the two people that had been standing there naked and weren't even aware of it realized that they were. Their mindset, everything was, was different. And from then on, it says that all of this sin nature has been passed down and inherited by each one of us. That's why, as I tell that story, you know that 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 all sounds familiar. It's the same way that we're tempted today. It's the same way that we sin today. Well, at the end of life, we basically have the choice of having our eternal destination decided on whether or not we were able to avoid sin and not bring upon ourselves the wages of sin, which is death, or if that sin is somehow to be paid for. Well, the Bible tells us there is none righteous, no, not one in the book of Romans. All have gone astray. All have turned to their own way. You and I know this. We all do our own thing, and we struggle every day. Even if we are deciding to try to live for God the best we can, don't the words of James 2.10 ring true in your life as well as mine, where it says, that if you were to keep that whole law and yet offend it in just one point, you are guilty of all. Just like the person who didn't speed, but they made an illegal U-turn. They didn't um, go through a crosswalk without stopping, and yet they made an illegal U-turn. They may have a whole list of rules of traffic violations that they did not do, but because they made the illegal U-turn, they are still a rule breaker. They are still a law breaker. They are still guilty of a violation of which they're going to receive, right? That's the same way for all of us. Maybe some of us are more murderous and treacherous or some are more lustful than others, but every single one of us has sinned in many ways. And yet it tells us there that if we offend in just one point, even if we were to keep the whole rest of it, which none of us have, we would be guilty of all. And so those wages of sin, which is death, we're all going to have to be suffering that unless there's another way. In First John, it tells us that he was the payment for our sins, the propitiation for our sins. He satisfied the payment, and not for ours only, but for the sins of the whole world. John 3.16 tells us that God so loved the world that he gave his son. Why? so that whoever would believe in him would not perish, but would be able to have everlasting life. So I'm bringing all this up to tell you today that your days, as well as mine, are numbered. There's one industry that we know doesn't go out of style no matter what the fads are, right? And that is death. There are people on this planet dying every single day. Just as people are being born, there's people that are dying we know this to be true. Can you imagine how overrun the population would be if people didn't die and they were just being born? This is the balance that seemingly is constantly there. What is happening to all these people that are dying? Every time you drive through a cemetery, maybe to visit a grave, and you see other funerals taking place on a daily basis, seven days a week, this shows us that they're dying. Every day in hospitals, people are dying across the world, and sometimes even in their own bed at home. When that time comes for you, will you be ready? Will you be ready? Because that is the question that we started off today with, right? If a man dies, 
will he live again? Job asked that question and came to the conclusion that, yes, he definitely would. Why? Because our hope is in Jesus. Jesus said himself to Mary and Martha in John chapter 14, he said, I'm the resurrection and the life. He that believes in me, though he were dead, yet he shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. He, the Bible also tells us that he who has a son hath life, and the wrath of God will not abide on him. He has life already, everlasting life. And so that's the hope that every single one of us has within us. The Bible tells us that on the last days, he's going to literally, the dead in Christ are going to rise first, and those who are alive will be caught up together with them in the clouds to be with the Lord, and they'll forever be with the Lord. The Bible gives us a hope of heaven that says that Jesus will actually be in the midst of his people, and his people will be with him, and he'll wipe away every tear from the eyes, every sorrow, every pain. There'll be no more suffering. There'll be no more death. All of these are the promises of the inheritance that God is setting up for each one of us. So why do I share this podcast? Because when that time comes for you, you can have this knowledge. You can have heard about this knowledge. You can even know that death is coming, but it will not change the fact that you'll be separated from him forever if you're trying to get there on your own good deeds and your own good works. The Bible tells us that we don't get to heaven by any works of righteousness, which we have done in Titus 3, 5. But according to his mercy, he saved us. Have you received the mercy of God? I hope this is true for you. If not, then I would challenge you right now to say, Lord, please have mercy on me, a sinner. I know that I've done wrong. I know that I've lied. I know that I've stolen. I know that I've cheated. I know that I've said things that I shouldn't say. I know that I've taken things that didn't belong to me. I know that I've thought things that I shouldn't think. I know that I've offended you, that I've sinned against you, but I believe that you, in your love for me, sent your son, the Lord Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for me, taking on the penalty that I deserve to pay, paying for my sins, and then as he was dead and buried, but then on the third day he rose again. And I believe that in forgiveness and to have him as my Lord and Savior, he'll also raise me up in the last day. If you pray that prayer to him, asking him to save you today, I would encourage you, please go ahead and reach out to me at jgothiersenior at gmail.com or on Facebook and Instagram at Senior, Or if you just have a question and you're still not sure and would like to talk about it and have your questions answered, please reach out to me so we can schedule a time to do that. This is the most important part of life. Yes, we will die and we have an appointed time and there will be a judgment. But when the judgment is determined that we're able to go to heaven because Jesus paid the price on the cross, it changes everything for eternity. God bless each and every one of you. I, I am so grateful for the opportunity we always have to connect. Uh, this that I shared with you today is my greatest prayer and my greatest wish for every single person that watches this podcast. And we hope to see you soon for the next episodes that are up and coming. But this has been episode number 76 of the Audacious Faith Podcast. God bless you.